to look at where we are in this ever-intensifying second wave of the pandemic. I'm joined now by three MPs from the different parties. Arif Farani is a parliamentary secretary, and he's the Liberal MP for the Toronto riding of Parkdale High Park. John Barlow is a member of, Com is a member of the Commons Health Committee. He's a Conservative MP for the Alberta riding of Foothills. And Don Davies is his party's health critic and the MP for Vancouver Kingsway. All three of you, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, Arif Arani, I want to start with something. It came up again today, but it came up yesterday as well. The health minister was asked, the prime minister was asked, we've heard from the health minister of Ontario, from the premier of Ontario, from the health minister of Alberta, that they've been told by federal officials that to expect uh, a total of six million doses of vaccines to be delivered to Canada uh, by the end of March. They've been told that. And the minister was again asked, Patty Heidi was again asked today, uh, whether that she could confirm or deny that, that figure because people are trying to make plans and she wouldn't do it. Why won't she ask, answer that question about how many vaccines we are expecting for that date in that time frame? Well, I think we've been we've been quite clear about what we're doing with respect to vaccine procurement. Uh, it's obvious uh, it should be obvious to Canadians that there is 400 million doses in total that have been procured from seven different uh, companies. That was informed by the COVID Expert Advisory Committee on vaccines. They instructed us about which vaccines look promising. We preemptively invested in seven of those vaccines. So there are many, many doses that are being made available. The actual accuracy as to which ones would be coming in and on what timeline, is very much contingent upon the actual approvals that, that will be made. All of these promising news that people are hearing about Moderna, Pfizer, et cetera, are indeed promising, but the approvals haven't been done, not in the United States and specifically not in, by Health Canada. But I guess the question is, if, uh, if federal officials, I mean, we have, Don, we have, uh, we have Doug Ford, the, the Premier of Ontario, if federal officials are actually telling provinces, here's the overall number, we don't even have to get into the division and the splitting it up and the proportioning it out, but here's the overall number we're expecting by March. Why can't she just confirm that? Well, I think because the number is in so much flux, in fairness, Martin. So the number, when I said this 400 million procured, for example, if some of the if the vaccines that are approved require multiple doses, you would need 70 million doses for 35 million Canadians, for example. So we have already invested in seven uh, vaccines. We are making sure that when the time comes when a vaccine is approved internationally and approved here, we will make sure Canadians are ready and we will get it to all Canadians, including to all of the provinces that are asking for it. Okay, John Barlow, what do you make of this? I know the Health Committee has been asking about vaccines and all that. Um, some premiers are going, and some of their officials and ministers are going ahead with the briefings they've been getting from federal uh, federal bureaucrats. Uh, should they be doing that, or are they playing politics? Maybe. Well, I, I think uh, to my colleague's point, I think they've been every anything but clear. Uh, we shouldn't be hearing these numbers from provincial health ministers or provincial premiers uh, when we don't even know as parliamentarians what these numbers are, and we certainly haven't been told this at, at the health committee. Uh, I think Canadians are becoming very frustrated with all these mixed messages uh, when the provinces are saying pretty pretty uh, diligently on, on what numbers they expect in terms of vaccines, uh, but the federal government, the health minister, and the pr prime minister for that matter matter have been uh, have not been transparent on this at all have been dodging this question uh, we don't know how many uh, vaccines are available we've heard now I'm hearing 40 400 million I've heard 20 I've heard six I've heard two we don't know how it's going to be delivered how it's going to be distributed the logistics behind it the infrastructure behind um, distributing th those vaccines Canadians need a clear answer and a clear strategy to when this vaccine is going to be available how many is going to be available who is going to get it how it's going to be distributed, who's going to pay for the infrastructure to store this vaccine. We have none of that. Uh, and uh, when we see this, the second wave that is now upon us, um, certainly there's, there's good news and there's hope that the vaccine is, is uh, on the horizon. But through this entire process, the, the mixed messages and the lack of communication that we've had from the federal government is, is frustrating not only us as parliamentarians, but certainly Canadians as well. Okay, Don Davies, I'm going to ask you, because I know at the Health Committee you have asked several times many questions about the vaccines, but I'm asking you specifically, how do you understand what we've just seen over the last two days, this strange phenomena where provincial ministers are giving numbers and talking about their, ho their hoped-for proportion of distribution, and the federal government is saying, look, you're hold your horses, don't count your chickens before they're hatched. How do you understand it all? Well, it's extremely puzzling. Uh, you know, we did have uh, uh, the Ontario Health Minister come out and be extremely specific. You know, she said she was going to get 6 million doses, 4 million from Pfizer, 2 million from Moderna. She even split up how those doses would be distributed in Ontario and the rest of the country. And yet we're not hearing 
any uh, specific figures from our federal health minister. Um, and in fact, I don't even hear a credible explanation from the health minister as to as to what's going on here. You know, is the Ontario health minister making up numbers? Um, you know, does she have information we don't? And I agree completely with what John just said. Look, um, the Canadian public deserves answers, and the, the best antidote to confusion and fear is transparency and details. We have the... Um, the U.S. Center for Disease Control uh, in in the, the country just south of us has announced that uh, they have all states ready for vaccine distribution effective November 15th. They are ready for 24-hour distribution once a vaccine is available. Um, and uh, we also are hearing troubling reports that despite these like large numbers and bland assurances from the Liberals that we're just doing such a great job, we don't know when Canada is going to get access to this, these vaccines and how solid these contracts are. Many of these contracts say that we can purchase up to a certain amount, and we're hearing reports even from Pfizer that we're getting uh, access to doses after the US and the UK. So I think it's time for the federal government to come clean, uh, come out with a plan, tell Canadians what the, the, um, the, how the distribution is gonna be on vaccines, how many we've actually procured, who's gonna be distributing it, in what order, et cetera. And, and that is desperately needed now, particularly with these modeling numbers that have come out today that are, are, so, actually, are so scary. Um, Arif Arani, um, let's get to the, the numbers today. And, and then one of the reasons we're talking, the Prime Minister and the Public Health Agency have shown these projections to the Canadian people. They are very, very sobering. Um, what do you say to people who take from that and then they say, well, if the situation is so dire, if things look very, very worrisome, to say the least, uh, is the federal government doing enough? The Prime Minister said he's not going to invoke, for example, the Emergencies Act, but could Ottawa be doing more? So I'd say that we've been here from the start in terms of addressing the needs of individual Canadians, their health care needs, their economic needs. We've been there for the provinces, we've been there for businesses, we will continue to be there. And the spending that we've put on the table, $230 billion odd dollars, demonstrates that. I think what I say when I hear those numbers, and they were sobering, when I heard the Prime Minister, it was concerning, uh, is that we have to make sure that we treat this with the same level of severity, the same level of conscientiousness and approach as Canadians, as we did back in March, April, and May, when Canadians showed incredible resilience. When he, talk, when he spoke about healthcare workers, that really resonated with me. My wife is one of those frontline workers. But I think what's also important as it relates to what we were previously discussing about vaccines is that a vaccine gives people hope, but the best antidote we have right now until a vaccine is approved and available in this country is for people to change their behavior, which means limiting gatherings, observing spacing, washing their hands, wearing masks, downloading apps, etc. That remains public health imperative number one, and that's the message that really needs to sink in, which is what I would want to communicate to Canadians right now. Okay, John Barlow, you're from Alberta, and I was looking at the public opinion polling this, this week, and Alberta is the only province where the majority, clear majority of Albertans aren't pleased, say they're dissatisfied with the way the provincial government has been handling the pandemic, and especially in terms of measures to try and contain the growth that you're seeing in your province. Would you be in favor of the, of the federal government becoming more involved in some way in Alberta? No, I think that the provinces have to make uh, those decisions on their own and what's best for their, their constituents. That, that is the, the jurisdiction that the provinces have. I think where the, the federal government does have a role is providing the tools and the resources that provinces need uh, to address these issues. And it was interesting today to hear the prime minister say, we need to use every tool in our toolbox. Well, that's great, but you have to ensure that Canadians and the provinces have access to those tools, have access to rapid testing, have access to home-based testing, have access to a clear strategy on vaccine distribution. Uh, countries around the world have been uh, proven that rapid testing is a safe, uh, science-based uh, alternative to quarantines, for example, to give us a, a clear pathway to economic recovery and certainly uh, to have to protect this, the health and safety of Canadians. But the, the federal government has been very slow in, in accessing and distributing rapid testing. We have several companies in Canada that have developed rapid tests that have been approved and are being used in countries around the world, but not here in Canada. Uh, and for the uh, Deputy Prime Minister, who is also heads Canada's COVID response team, to say, that uh, comparing access to rapid testing to selling snake oil to Canadians when Canadians are losing their jobs, they're losing their businesses, losing loved ones, uh, and, and certainly our mental health and opioid addictions are at a crisis level, they are looking for um, solutions. And to have this, again, this 
this lack of transparency and these lack of details and, and certainly stepping up in terms of expediting approval processes for some of these this technology that is being used in countries around the world, I think is very frustrating for Canadians. Okay, Don Davies, I want to ask you the question that really a lot of people are asking and the Prime Minister put it to people as well. When we see these figures and when we've learned over the last nine months that public health is about what the public does as much as anything else, where are we in terms of the public's confidence and the public's uh, compliance and the public's cooperation? Because this Christmas season, or this holiday season, is going to be all about what you and I do. So where are we in terms of governments, the federal government, and people's trust and, and compliance? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, you know, I'm in British Columbia here. I can tell you that our our, uh, our NDP government in British Columbia has done, an, uh, you know, I think an exceptional job uh, in maintaining the public's trust. Um, and I think that's uh, one of the reasons why we're doing a little bit better than other provinces. But uh, this government here has also been very proactive and it's also been very transparent in, in its information. And they've also been uh, bold, I think, in some of the, the moves they've taken. Um, you know, I, I agree with 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 Arif that right now the main message is is we really have to have every Canadian take the public health advice that they're getting across this country very very seriously. Right now we have a transmission rate above one. Um, our national positivity rate is over six percent. We're on track at at this level to have over twenty thousand cases per day by the end of this year if we don't get this under control. So. Uh, but I think it also uh, takes federal leadership. Uh, you know, as John said, the PHAC and the federal government has been incredibly slow, almost across the board, slow to suggest mask wearing, slow to acknowledge um, community transmission, even recently slow, very slow to acknowledge aerosol transmission, which the WHO acknowledged in the summer. We just had that up on our PHAC website a week ago. Uh, this is the kind of, of tepid response, lack of transparency, and slow response from the federal government that I think can jeopardize that very important public confidence that's needed. I, finally, what I would just say is we need a strong assurance from the federal government that Canadians will be taken care of because Canadians have to be supported. Yeah. If we want them to follow this public health advice, they've got to be able to stay home. They've got to be economically supported uh, at this time, and I think a strong message uh, from the Prime Minister in this regard is needed at this point in time to keep that confidence and have people conform to the public health advice they're getting. Okay, um, Arif Arani, John Barlow, and Don Davies, I want to thank you. And all three of you, being the public servants you are, I want to uh, congratulate you and, and hopefully you will be taking the same message to your constituents in, uh, in uh, this collective job we all have. I want to thank you. Thanks for taking the time. Thank Thanks, you. Martin. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Good to see you both.